Link TV, connecting you to the world. Link TV is viewer supported. Watch more at linktv.org. Today on Earth Focus, filmmaker Jim Tebow on the link between water and international security with excerpts from his latest film, Running Dry, Beyond the Brink. All coming up on Earth Focus. Water is sacred and venerated. We are born and reborn in water. Water washes away impurities, heals, and is thought by some to restore youth and provide a link to eternal life. Water flows through us and around us. It nurtures civilizations and enables nature's bounty to grow. Water is life, but today it's threatened. We're running out of water because of growing demand. As more people need water for food, industry, and daily consumption, there is less to go around, and we are polluting much of what is left. How will this affect us? The film Running Dry calls attention to the problem. Here's a look. There is no greater issue confronting the world than the water scarcity and quality crisis. Every day, 14,000 people die because of a lack of water or from disease caused by water pollution and 9,500 of these are children. We are living on 1% of the world's water, and most of that is used for agriculture. The other 99% of the world's water is too salty to drink or composed of icebergs and snow. Water is a very precious resource and a quarter of the world's population urgently needs clean water. Running Dry is a film produced by Jim Tebow, president of the Chronicles Group, an organization that educates the public about issues that affect our planet's survival. The availability of water is at the top of the list. Can water shortages lead to conflict? Tebow's newest film, Beyond the Brink, explores the link between water and international security. Here is a look. In many regions throughout the world, basic humanitarian needs are largely ignored. These areas often have the least flexible systems to accommodate change, so that drought and extreme weather events will exacerbate the drastic conditions and further threaten international security. Water is a focus of difficulties across the planet. I, I, the first time I visited Israel was 1993. And I said at the time, they're not going to solve their problems in the Middle East until they solve their water problems. The reality of decreasing water quality, rampant overuse, and poor infrastructures allow for very little flexibility in dealing with drought or other stresses and is impeding development and threatening social, political stability and cohesion. There are currently 6.8 billion people populating the planet. One in eight do not have access to safe water. And 40% of the world's population do not have access to sanitation. Over a million children die every year as a result of diseases caused by unclean water and sanitation. As the number of people increase, so will the stress on these water and sanitation systems. The population of the planet is projected to be 8.5 to 9.2 billion people by 2050. Drought and water scarcity, pollution, loss of agricultural land, depletion of wild fish populations will result in an environment 
which will not supply enough food to sustain the population of 2050. Jim Tebow speaks with Earth Focus correspondent Miles Benson about his film and why we should take notice. Right now, we're, we're evolving into a very, very dangerous period in the history of the world. Uh, my current project looks at the issues of climate change, drought, uh, food, uh, water scarcity, uh, its impact on, uh, on agriculture, energy, uh, public health, food supply, and its ultimate uh, effect on international security. Right now, I think there are parts of the globe where you can say, hey, this doesn't appear to be that big of, of an issue. In other parts, it's a huge issue already. And as the 21st century plays out, this will be one of the defining issues of the century. I filmed in Australia, and a lot of the similar problems we have in the American Southwest uh, are dramatically presented in, in, the, in Australia where um, major fires because of the dryness, lack of water. In February of 2009, they call it Black Saturday. The temperatures were well over 130 degrees Fahrenheit, winds of 70 miles an hour, and they had a major fire, and about 170 people were killed. Many, many were injured. Uh, lakes, streams are drying up. The agriculture community has been hit really hard. I think we're, we're entering into a really interesting period where we've got um, soils which have been eroded or acidified, uh, we've got water courses which are, have been degraded um, and, and reduced flows to start with. So we're, we're entering into a period where we have to produce a lot more um, with a lot less, uh, with a lot less impact and that's going to seriously challenge our abilities and that sort of change is going to impact uh, strongly on people's livelihoods on their quality of life. We're not going to have more water, we're facing the challenge of having less. We've got large users of water, particularly in the farming communities, that are facing a, a myriad of problems ranging from shortage of water, environmental conditions, uh, where we've got deteriorating environments, a challenging uh, commodity price world uh, food markets, and all of us, uh, whether it's in Australia or uh, America, we've probably all got to face that and look at ways of changing. Farmers, third and fourth, fifth generation farmers have lost their, that there's not enough water to be able to sustain the, the agriculture community. Psychologically, um, many, many suicides, a thousand uh, farmers a year commit suicide in Australia, third and fourth generation, because they've lost their land, they've lost their, their farms because of a lack of water. We're also generating that kind of, a, those problems in, um, like for example, the San Joaquin Valley in California where there's uh, drought and uh, water scarcity. California supplies one third of the food to the entire country and we start losing our agricultural lands in California be because of lack of water and drought and so forth. Um, we have, that's a, that's a major problem, food security and national security. We need to come to grips with the, these realities now. We need to have plans to start dealing with these issues. I mean, because it's really serious. If we don't solve this problem, do you see a future of conflict between nations over water? No question about it. Mikhail Gorbachev said in my original documentary, Running Dry, no nation leader would hesitate to, to go to war, potentially, if, if his country is running out of water. And when you can't feed your population sufficiently, and you know that there is other ways that you can get that food, and there's, there's a real potential for escalation of weapons of mass destruction. Can you point your finger at the most likely flashpoints around the globe? Pakistan and India. I mean, here's you got two countries who have weapons of mass destruction, and, uh, and they're, oh, they've been in conflict with each other for forever, and I think this is a real issue. That's why that there's so much focus right now on Pakistan is because of uh, potential dangers associated with that part of the world. There's also uh, concern about materials getting in the hands of terrorists and so forth. So there's always that particular issue. But I mean, I think that um, Middle East is, is, could be a, a flash point. 
we have to start looking at ways of, of circumventing that. We have to start bringing people together. Uh, one of the messages that, um, that I, I feel is really important is that instead of looking at how water may separate us, is how we can bring people together. I think that water can be a bridge to peace. How do we persuade political leaders that this is a now issue for them? That's a real hard question to answer because usually the fox has to be in the hen house before anybody takes action in our country. And we need uh, leadership that begins to understand these things. I mean, there's got to be members of Congress who, can, who have the vision. And if, they, if the people don't have that vision, then they should be replaced by people who do. We have to get serious people in these positions of, of, uh, of our elected officials. What other approaches are we going to have to take? We have to value what the price of water. We have to value what it is. The public and private utilities in our country have done such a great job in delivering a wonderful, wonderful water at, at a very low price. And we, so we don't even think about it. We have to change that. And if, and if suddenly, out of the blue, you get a, a utility bill of $500, it's going to sober you up a little bit when you start thinking about how you're misusing that resource. Jim, you've got a project in the works next in South Africa. What's that about? Uh, Running Dry South Africa is a, um, is, uh, we now have a, uh, a cooperation and partner, establish a partnership with the, the country of South Africa. And we're going to implement a major educational project throughout the entire country in every squatter camp, in every township throughout all of South Africa to educate the citizens, empower them so they may become proactive in their own communities and be able to start dealing with, with issues of water and sanitation. South Africa, I think, uh, can be a model for how other countries can implement you know, what they can do. And so that's where we're kind of looking at it is running dry South, South Africa is bigger than South Africa. It is really going to, once we implement that project, it will be a model for other countries in the world. Jim Tebow, thank you very much. You're welcome. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world. To learn more, visit linktv.org.